you're out there and you're taking you know, what are thought of un as unpopular positions, however true as they may be, you're gonna get mobbed. And one of the interesting things was a few months ago, uh, you were trying to explain to people that critical race theory was going to be incredibly destructive and perhaps the biggest threat to Jews in, in modern times. Um, or in, in our times now, let's say since the Holocaust, something like that. Uh, we need to do a whole different uh, stream about critical race theory and give a very simple uh, analysis what it is to people who are not very versed in uh, academic uh, theories, but it's very much correct. There are many extremely anti-Semitic people in critical race theory. Yes. I'm uh, doing a teasing to the video, we will deeply analyze it, but I'm jumping ahead to give a very simple explanation. One of the, the, the main bases of the, ideolo the ideology of uh, critical race theory is that the most you are oppressed, you are inherently more uh, right in your uh, moral, uh, ethics, and political ideas, the more you are oppressed. And so, because Jews were the nation that suffered the most throughout history, but on average, the Jews are Western and uh, like Western ideals, it's, pull, it's put all this uh, theory to the garbage chute if the Jews suffer the most but are not uh, radicals uh, like them and want uh, more or less regular uh, Western liberal democracies. So they must either uh, deny they suffered uh, the most throughout history uh, or to say uh, they are not real Jews, like the bro he uh, black Hebrew Israelites, either they are fake Jews, they didn't really suffer, or they are uh, evil, or they need to be actively pro uh, prosecuted. So it's inherently will make people anti-Semitic. It's, uh, it's the Jewish question of the critical race theorist. Um, the, the, um, if, if people want to understand, maybe one way is uh, the Lotus Eaters did a 10 minute intro to critical race theory for people who do not understand what it is. Uh, but uh, It's kind of a misleading to purely learn about critical race theory because it's basically an application of critical theory. If you only only know what critical race theory, you, you don't know the whole picture. That's why the people in the leftist media in the United States just lie about it to make people not aware how dangerous it is. Yeah. Like we say, critical race theory is just, uh, they took some legal theory. Yes, but yes. the legal theory came from critical theory. It's just an endless loop if you don't know the the so the accurate sources of all this. Uh, yeah, they fresh. they play they play um, hide the ball when you try to speak to them basically. So when you say, um, well, this uh, theorist said so, they say, oh, he's not authority. He's not an authority. This nobody reads this. This is not a serious. You should go to the sources. You should go to the proper. And then when you quote the proper ones, they dismiss that. Oh, that's old. That's not, you know, current. That's not what people think now. They just keep saying that that's not what critical race theory is. Uh, but um, uh, fortunately, there's a big the start. There seems to be um, some backlash starting against it uh, because it's now entering the schools and parents are getting angry. Yeah. Uh called an anti-Semite for that. And there has been a ton of people calling you. I, I've defended you, more than happy to defend you always on this stuff. And these are the same people who call everyone else a Nazi. Yeah. Can you explain a little bit about how Jews don't fit into that calculator? Well, and why I, they, you were they, warning about this? Well, it, I mean, there are, there are multiple reasons I was warning about it, but I do think that critical race theory poses the greatest threat to Jews in America and throughout the West, maybe the whole world today. Certainly, we're not talking about 1930, whatever. Uh, certainly not that. But the greatest threat now, we see people getting beat up. It posits that Jews, and there's a book called How Jews Became White Folks by um, Karen Brodkin from the 90s, 98 or something like this. And she lays out that Jewish people were not considered white when they came to America, you know, largely following the Holocaust, for example. They were discriminated against, they were ghettoized, et cetera, and then they worked very diligently to become recognized as white, often throwing black people and other people of color under the bus. Which is a, a pure, pure vicious lie. Jews marched along, uh, famous uh, rabbis and uh, public leaders uh, walked alongside uh, uh, Martin Luther King in his uh, uh, civil rights uh, parades. Uh, there are, I think there is a sad story about a few civil, Jewish uh, civil rights activists 
that they got kidnapped and murdered by uh, KKK members, I think in the 50s or uh, 60s, if I re remember correctly. Also, if you go inside this rabbit hole of those uh, disgusting critical race theorists, there is uh, some vicious anti-Semitic uh, blood libels about Jews, like Jews only supported the civil rights act, so they could rent uh, blacks' uh, apartment uh, at very steep prices. Or, uh, no, it's yeah. real. Yeah. Or, it's it's uh, vicious anti-Semitism. It's not just uh, Jews, Jews are icky. This is a... Uh, evil, vicious uh, anti-Semitism. Of course, also, the, the majority of uh, Jewish also, people just own one property in which they live, so they can't rent anything out to any people. So it's not really a reason for them to vote one way or another. Also, there is a, a very sickly-minded uh, professor. He was more or less the founder of uh, uh, Gen 1 of Critical Race Theory, Derek Bell, who once wrote... Uh, it's very stupid science fiction book. The, I think it's a short book, something like 60 pages, that if aliens came to the United States, I think he wrote it in the 80s, after the civil rights, that if aliens came to the America and said, give us all the, the US blacks as to be test subject in cruel experiments at our home planet, and we will give you money, treats, technologies, and so on, and we said all the, the white people and, and, and Jews included would immediately say yes. This is a, also, a, it's not a popular to say, not only it's a white, uh, anti-white racism, this is a vicious, vicious uh, lies about Jews. This is basically parroting uh, uh, Islamic and sometimes Nazi anti-Semitic uh, stories. Yeah, and, and we cover to some some extent um how they got there on the Bezmanov stream if uh, people are interested um gilad is saying uh something which is true uh that uh, james lindsay was condemned as an anti-semite by a jewish organization uh so but because he was critical of this critical race theory which is a racist ideology uh uh, forget was, about he, racism. This is the the mild part. Yeah, but it's basically was, to to start either a race war or a, a black led communist revolution. If you can get down to it yeah. uh, at its most core of a basis. And and uh, he was condemned. Uh, and he says uh, that in a way the ADL is like BLM. It's uh, what do you call it? Uh, astrosurfing or astroturfing or whatever the expression is. Uh, I think astroturfing, which means to, they, to they speak in the name of yeah, people exactly. to uh, promote uh, things they don't really support or know about. Exactly. And we've got uh, in the UK, there is uh, the, the Jewish Board of Deputies or whatever they're called. And they are kind of elected, but not really exactly. It's a complicated process. It goes through the synagogues. Uh, you have to be a member of a synagogue in order to vote, and it seems a very uh, controlled by lefties who who spend a lot of their time having tea with uh, imams rather than uh, you know fight for uh, Jewish causes such as uh, physical attacks on Jewish people in London. Uh, that should be more of their concern. Uh, and they should be supporting uh, Israel because that is why they are safe wherever they are. But um, let's go on. Yeah, let's go on so we don't go too far from the subject. But yes, the ADL is is astroturfing, uh, and the, it's the same as what um, it's it's the same as what was said earlier uh, about Soros. Soros is astroturfing. The fact that he's Jewish does not give him any protection. I you don't know. really think he consider himself Jews in any meaningful way, except in, uh, uh, some in, in, chat in cocktail parties. Yeah, uh, in Israel there are lots of Jews that commit crimes all the time. They get they get uh, caught um, some of the time, and they end up in prison. And they are Jewish. Being Jewish does not mean you're not a criminal or you're not a bad person or you make bad choices. You're always open to criticism. I don't understand why crit being critical of George Soros is anti-Semitic. It's not. Look, I'm also uh, critical of, most uh, of the people just smear you as one, but uh, but uh, sadly, very, very rarely, some alt-right people 
use this uh, to criticize Soros, but they do it in a vicious uh, anti-Semite way and implying it's some sort of a web of the Jews uh, operated in no, Jerusalem. No, he's, he's, in my opinion, he's an enemy of Israel. Um, so he's, he, he's no friend of mine. I think, yes, I but think uh, his activities harm Jews and harm Israelis. So. This is one of the ways that the alt right and the woke left uh, amplify each well, other. That's why, they, they, that's why they are misguided. They do not understand that Soros is not a representative of the Jewish people. Uh, Israelis do not like him. The Israeli also, government. Also, because of them, uh, normal people can criticize him uh, uh, strongly because they immediately will be connected to those uh, weirdos. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah. Soros is bad news. Uh, Yair Netanyahu, uh, Bibi's son, called him Israel's number one enemy. So um, yeah, um, th that's that's a fake accusation. It's 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 trying to use us as human shields for his activities. Um, Not historical. They often tended to be progressive, and. Um, rights movements in many regards. And so they position themselves, and she actually makes this argument, not just as white to gain access to white privilege, but as the setters of whiteness, the people who are the highest level of white culture, who get to be the cultural, yeah, the people who create white culture and define white culture. So they literally become the people at the very top of white culture, and then they hoard the resources for themselves. And this is a literal... Just to uh, give you an example how extreme this could be very quickly, those critical race theorists say the, the white man is the evil and he made all the evil in this world. And then they immediately they add, and the Jews is whiter than the white. So this is basically mean the Jews made all the problem in this world. The Jews are making all the ills in this world. It's basically a Nazi-like propaganda. Watch uh, The Eternal Jew by uh, Lenny Riefenstadt, I think. This is basically the same uh, claims one, uh, to a thief. This is, could be very uh, vicious very quickly. Of course, uh, this is what, why he's concerned, and his concern is, uh, um, I think, real. Yeah, I, I have a question to Leica. She wrote a, another comment about Soros and feminism. I thought it was a, this kind of global uh, one uh, woke uh, world government kind of guys, and she suddenly says he's uh, anti-women or something. What, like, uh, Leica, could you please... Uh, to write a slightly longer comment to explain your argument. Uh, uh, let's yeah, let's continue a bit till she will write okay. it. Okay, uh, press. Creation of feminism. And the thing is, what I was warning about is this is its own serious danger. Ra far left anti-Semitism is on the rise. It's going to continue. I said there's a normal baseline, which apparently I got accused of that. Like, apparently I was normalizing it, they said. <laughs> but I was just trying to express in a tweet that anti-Semitism already exists. Now there's more coming from the far left. But I said there's also more coming from the far right because many progressive Jews are actually touting this ideology. And then for, for me, who ties it to its historical roots, for example, in the Frankfurt School uh, of Critical Theory, which is correct to tie it to that, um, those guys were all Jews, the so-called cultural Marxism conspiracy. This is uh, almost 100% uh, correct. Sadly, most of the Frankfurt School were Jewish. Most of them were uh, atheist, assimilist, uh, communist Jews. Uh, not communist, uh, exactly. They founded uh, some new f wave of ideology called neo-Marxism. But there was also uh, Antonio Gramsci, who was an, an, an Italian. But yes, sadly, neo-Marxism was invented mainly by, mainly by Jews. Yes, but uh, there's, there's an important point to make, which none of them make. Uh, which I, I make, which a few professors do not change society on their own. And it doesn't matter what they do and how many books they write and how popular the books are within their circles. In order for an ideology to thrive and become mainstream, you need money, you need power, you need to be able to access all sorts of things. Um, and I think what happened is... Um, the Soviets and later on organizations like the Muslim Brotherhood, Qatar, and um, recent, more recently the CCP have been financing those people, but they get financed in uh, covert ways. It's not even those people, they don't even know that they are being financed by, uh, by them. So, for example, uh, there's good reason to believe that uh, Peace Now movement in Israel uh, was financed by the Soviets. 
But the way the Soviets would do it, they would donate money to uh, Western organizations that were uh, uh, trying to promote. NGOs purely handling money yeah. to uh, smaller NGOs. Which is which is similar to how the Soros uh, system works. Um, so they would uh, finance um, artists, writers, um, filmmakers, um, people who can move the culture. Um, uh, let's see what Lake Award. Or that is promoting a sex work, uh, a sex work to put it uh, quote yeah, unquote. Yeah, I, I don't think he really believes it, or he personally running uh, those kind of uh, businesses. I just think this is the work uh, mainstream today, and he just give to the new what's uh, the new work uh, phenomena all his money. Sadly, the the work left became extremely sex work in a, in the alarming and the, the deeply disturbed way. I read that uh, there was some UK university that many universities in the West give guidance into part-time job to cover expenses to the students, like uh, I don't go think be it's a barista, many. go be a barista, go be a cop, go be a barista, go be a carpenter for uh, cover your uh, livelihood. And this UK university bring, brand uh, a, a madame and started uh, lecturing young women to become uh, uh, escorts. If, uh, to the fullest extent, extent in that word, to get money. This is a completely deranged behavior. Well, we know we know from scientific psychological studies that uh, taking part in uh, this so-called profession is very damaging psychologically, and it's also um, it's going to make life very difficult for you because uh, you know you, someone is going to find out sooner or later, and it's going to harm your 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 image wherever you are so very bad very bad advice you should, what you should do I, as a student is try to study and uh and when you're not just enjoy your time you know and uh, i don't think but he have some sort of hidden agenda in this subject i just think he give money to the new book crazes yeah let's go on theory that the so entry now there is no cultural marxism explained there there's just a conspiracy theory is that for school jews wanted to overturn Western civilization. And that's a conspiracy theory. It's anti-Semitic. So I said, there are people, as somebody who criticizes that a lot, people come to me all the time and they're all like, James, just admit that it is actually Jews. I'm like, no, it's communists. And they're mm -hmm. like, just, just take the last step. So all these actual anti-Semites are always trying to get me to go that far. Well, part of, part of the reasons, the several reasons why there were so many Jews in this movement, because they, they were the immigrants at the time who brought German socialism into America, but there were other Jews who were uh, with other ideas. The problem for them was that they were not going to be accepted on the American right. So while the American left was open to all these crazy German socialist idea and, and um, you know, they got uh, heard, uh, the American right did not really want to hear from the, the more right-wing Jews. I, th I think that's part of the problem. And the, um, these ideas came from, from uh, Germany and Austria. Along with them came uh, the Austrian School of uh, Economics, uh, lots of science. Which is uh, far uh, right, extreme libertarian, libertarianism yeah. economics. Yeah, and uh, the other thing that came is a lot of uh, classical music and, um, and German science um, with those people. But it just so happens that all of them were German not all of them were so what what they're getting is like a really tiny subsection of socialists who basically ran away from uh, europe and um they got promoted i think the left was uh, american left was ready for this sort of stuff. because they were desperate after uh, communism was uh, discovered to be a, a monstrous failure they wanted new ideology and new marxism is uh, some sort of a next gen uh, communism so they were desperate to new ideas because yeah. they had uh, nothing to offer versus the right in the cold war for americans and british people watching uh you may not remember this or know this but in 56 the united states teamed up with the soviets against the british the french and the israelis in the suez uh, um, in a diplomatic pressure not militarily yeah but they effectively teamed up with, with the Soviets. So they had no problem working with the Soviets when they wanted. Um, 
against Israel in this case. Um, anyway, we'll continue. And, I, and I've had some very scary conversations with some from far right characters, not Nazis, but like kind of mainstream dudes who are getting more and more seduced. And I said, there's going to be a rising or there is a rising far right anti-Semitism that's new from that normal baseline. And, and, and by it's, the way, you're, well, by the way, you're, the point that you're making there is also something that Dennis Prager has been arguing for years and years and years, that, yep. th that these people who traded in all their beliefs as Jews for progressivism, leftism, socialism, communism, everything else, they're not doing it in the name of Judaism. They're doing it in the name of that ideology. Exactly. And the problem is, as reactionaries often tend to be, they're not real precise. So they see a bunch of Jews taking up communism and they're like, aha, communism is Jewish. Is Jewish. Just take the last step. I, I think here is to cherry ball. I think those most of those people are uh, actual uh, neo-Nazis and they just uh, say, oh, this folk race uh, make people uh, be very hostile towards Jews. So let's uh, recruit them and turn them into woke leftist anti-Semites into a far-right neo-Nazi anti-Semite. Here I think he gave him slightly too much, uh, it was slightly too much uh, cherry ball. And I'm like, guys, a disaster in the making. This is a tidal wave of hate for Jews from both, from the fringes of both sides that's on the rise, rapidly on the rise. And I warned about this, and then um, some important blue check people immediately accused me of blaming Jews for anti-Semitism, yeah. which is a, 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 one of these third rail things that you're not allowed to touch. And I was like, well, I'm going to continue to point out this problem because we're headed to a catastrophe. Uh, when we see what's happened over the last couple months, so, okay, so there were the attacks on the Jews in New York and L.A. and all over the place, but then also what was ha preceding that was all of these attacks that unfortunately were done almost exclusively by black people on Asian people. So it was very confusing for the intersectional calculator and very <laughs> confusing for mainstream media. But so all of the messaging out there was, oh, we should we stand with our Asian brothers and sisters, which I don't want anyone to have any hate crimes against them, of course. But they could never really say who was doing it. And now there's some videos leaking out where we are seeing black people attack Asian people and then there was one video just in the last little while where the guy said, well, you're the oppressive class. I can't be racist towards you. You're Asian. I'm black. I can't. That is critical race theory. That's literally in the in the docs that you're referring to. No, that's exactly right. So, yeah, Asians are and Jews also when they're not considered white directly. Asians are often considered white adjacent. There's not just Asian. They are starting to add to this uh, freakish uh, list of all the, the people who are inherently racist. Uh, whites, Jews, uh, Asians, and now they are adding uh, let, uh, Latinos who have, uh, have, have a slightly brighter skin color or having uh, Western ideologies like uh, Cuban refugees. Yeah. And up the value of whiteness and the, these hard work and, you know, punctuality and loyalty and all things. They've taken up these values and therefore they're complicit in the maintenance of the oppressive white supremacist system, even though they're not. So now they're seen not just as uh, people who are upholding the system, but also traitors to the solidarity of racial oppression that the theory posits. And so you add in that to the fact that, oh, this oppressive system is screwing you over. If you're black, you have no opportunity because the oppressors, you know, I don't know if they think that black people can't read, but they go, you know, they can and they go and read and they say, oh. Joe Biden well, said in a speech that the black people can't use the internet. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, very revealing about the true state of affairs. Um, you know, I, it's uh, from economics, revealed preferences, which is how people act. When they, when they um, ask people if America should use voter ID, meaning you have to show some ID before you can vote, in Israel, it's insane to just imply that it, it shouldn't be the state. In yeah. Israel, you must have an ID. There is an armed guard who can search you physically if he suspects you uh, just from his head. I once uh, into election came uh, in, a, in a pajama pants into the voting booth and he immediately asked an ID when he saw me. Those <laughs> kind of things in America, in, uh, in America are, uh, sounded fascist-like to say uh, for, uh, no... no uh, uh, mail ID in any way except foreign diplomats and handicapped, uh, armed guards uh, inside the building and outside, outside uh, ID is a must, 
it's a far right talking point in America to offer this kind of thing, and it's a, a, it's kind of center most of the Western democracies. Well, the the thing is that um, the, the implication here was that uh, first, most black people drive in America, uh, so they have a, an ID already from the driving license. Um, but if they don't, uh, you could easily make it very, very cheap. It could be subsidized by the government, this voter ID. It could be even free, or you could just send like $5, you know, or something like that to, to cover the mail. Uh, so they could, that could be solved. Um, some people could be given an exemption if they have some good reason why they can't have a voter ID. They could solve that, that problem. The point they were making is that the reason that um, uh, the people want voter ID is to prevent black people from voting. They were saying that black people are incapable of getting a voter ID. When most people have, most black people have a driver's license, they have a bank account, you have a, they have a, they have a bank card, they have all those things. They, they're just, you know, they're just normal, okay? And it, it, it's revealing that the left thinks of them as less than human, that they are not able to get an ID, that they are somehow disabled. That getting an ID is a complex affair that a, a poor black person who, who couldn't achieve somehow. Uh, it's a very uh, it, what was it, what was it called the um, uh, racism of low expectations, yeah, big, bigotry of low expectations, which is uh, from from. It's more than that. Some of these hardcore progressive uh, said said uh, it said they need to say this phrase: treat minorities like pet. They uh, own and uh, manage. This is a very disgusting uh, behavior. Yeah. It is. It's 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 called it's patronizing. It's just treating people as less than you. And come come, not, we will sort you out. You know, uh, you're not you're not good enough to deal with all this. You know, don't worry. We will take care of things for you. you know, what what kind of behavior is it? It's really it's this it's it it, it it's disabling. You know, it, it, they talk about empowering people, but they are doing the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. If you treat it like that, you think you, you end up thinking that you're not capable of doing anything. Biden computers or something. See, so, that's, you know. that's, yeah, Joe, I don't know. Joe Malarkey, I said that on TV accidentally. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whoops. Um, no, but it's, it, they go look and they say, you know, well, all the opportunities in education are being stolen because of whiteness and they're excluding black people and they're stealing it from black people. And they can go look at the statistics and see these advanced high schools are 70% Asian. And it's like, it's not that hard to figure out who you're going to get mad at. Right. And then when you add in the fact that you have, economically depressed and stress and the COVID and the crime and everything else is rising and all these stresses are rising, mentally ill and criminal people are being like just let off in these Democrat cities. It's only a matter of time. You're going to start seeing violence and the violence is going to happen along predictable pathways where there's scapegoating. And so, you know, whiteness, Asian, you're having your opportunities stolen from you. Well, who's stealing? Them? Well, the school 70 percent Asian. Well, it's probably the Chinese. Let's get them. You know, it's not hard logic. Speaking of the Chinese, do you think, uh, not the Chinese people, but the, China, the government of China, do you think that it is somehow complicit in uh, spreading this stuff in the United States? Not even worth asking this question that it's so obvious. It's uh, yeah. promoted by China, Russia, uh, Iran, uh, Muslim Brotherhood, and so on and so forth. I think Rubin Neither. knows it, and he's just giving him an opportunity to say something about it. Uh, they both in the know, they yeah. just, uh, to put it very mildly, because it's, it's on YouTube, and too many of them are centrists who can't uh, get, take so much uh, truth bomb uh, instantly, because they would immediately shut their brain down. Yeah. You wanted war against the United States, you're probably not doing it with nukes and troops on the ground, right? You're going to suffer a ground invasion. But that in essence, we will just do it to ourselves, and you won't need one bullet fired, or, or perhaps Russia, or something else. Well, it's certainly the case that the Chinese understand the dynamics of a cultural revolution. Right. Um, that's undeniable. But the, the direct answer to your question is has to be yes. I don't think it's always been that way or even necessarily for long been that way. They used to make fun of the BISO, the white left, and then they stopped making fun of them. And then all of a sudden you see this summit, you know, this diplomatic summit in, in Alaska. And what are the it's Chinese true, hitting? Our, our American diplomats with and they have no defenses to it's oh well you guys are systemically racist and what do you see their you know their propaganda accounts on
<laughs> Isn't it funny to be? It, it's it's like it's very familiar to Israelis because Israelis have been accused of uh, apartheid. Apartheid, when actually, racism, the, the countries cruelty. around them, the countries around them are guilty of apartheid. They've been accused of racism. The countries around them, the accusers are guilty of uh, racism. Israel was accused of its treatment of women. Of all things, uh, uh, Israel is, is a Western. Uh, is our a Western entire Western. Uh, nationalism was denounced by the UN for 20 years straight. Uh, we had a resolu resolution that Zionism of all forms is uh, inherently racist. It, it was on the paper on the UN uh, drawers, drawers yeah, the for point... something like 20 years until they uh, re re uh, removed it. So the, the point I was trying to make is that the, accuse, is, the people accusing Israel of treatment of women are Saudi Arabia and, and places like that where the uh, treatment of women is just on a different uh, level. So, um, you know, it, 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 the same thing is happening here, um, basically. So it, it, it's familiar, you know, it's all sounding familiar. It's like the same style of attack. Um, the media constantly hammering oh you guys are systemically racist we're not going to listen to the to the west because of, or to america because there's no moral authority because of its systemic racism problem until they fix it meanwhile of course very famously they have like commercials where the chinese girls washing the black guy asian in the washing machine with soap you right. know it's like they're not exactly great on that issue themselves so certainly they're aware of it certainly they are fueling it certainly they have been throwing money at things that uh have gone down this path um, and certainly they would understand that it will weaken America from within. The strategy, broadly speaking, is what's known as top down, bottom up, inside, outside. Not only do they understand it, they literally mock Americans for their attitudes. They, they see them as uh, losing the, the plot. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, some of the s nonsense that uh, Vosh and all these people are dis uh, discussing is shown in, in, in China as comedy. Um, you know, it's just, they're looking at their sworn enemy collapsing on itself in, in, in a way. So if they infiltrate on the inside and weaken something from the inside, outside pressure can then crush it. So that's the aspect of it. And they would understand political warfare and these strategies extremely well. I mean, the, Sunzo wrote the book on this stuff you know, 2,000 years ago or something. Yeah, all right, last This question. is basically Sun Tzu that Yuri Bezmenov mentioned, as it was taught yeah. uh, to all Soviet uh, Union students. Exactly, exactly. Very, very frightening, because it's all connecting to this uh, kind of uh, subversive lunacy. Yeah. For you, you've, you've given me the, okay, you got to jump, and there's going to be some... some um, so, I mean, just talk directly to the parent that's watching this right now or the 16-year-old kid who doesn't want to believe he's evil because of the color of his skin or the teacher who is afraid of saying what the truth is. I mean, th this has infiltrated everything. The, the guy in HR, the freaking plumber. Feel free to talk directly to them. I got some bad news to start with, and then we'll get a little more encouraged. Um, you actually have to learn a little bit about this. You're, are, you actually are going to have to go read at least a couple of pages of critical race theory to defeat that argument that we hear from Joy Reid or whatever, that the people criticizing it don't know what it is. Luckily, if you start with some of the basics, it's not that hard. You have to get the gist. Now, the bad news is over. You do have to become educated and informed. That said, you're not racist. They are. They don't have the argument. You do. The evidence is not on their side. It's on yours. So they don't have the evidence, they don't have the argument, they don't have the moral high ground. You do have all three. You have the evidence. If you go look where they're implementing these diversity programs, companies and schools are doing worse. The evidence, uh, racism is on the rise. We see these problems arising in our cities being justified along the lines of these doctrines. You have the evidence. You have the argument. It's not hard to see through how their argument is actually completely bogus that, oh, we're going to overcome racism by putting more social significance into race – and intentionally making the white race a negative thing and applying this uh, imposition of, of racial identity on everybody in this kind of very um, politically active way and turning everybody into political activists instead of, you know, educated, uh, informed, active interactions. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is very true. But everybody is becoming politicized. Uh, and this is what they want. They want to activate the whole thing so that they can bring some revolution. 
And uh, just uh, as an aside, uh, I was... even NFL became political with her. Uh, NFL is gay at uh, last week. Well, well, everything, yeah. I mean, the football, everything is political. But just as an aside, I was uh, while looking for um, a Fuentes video to, 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 you know, to see if there's anything uh, else we could talk about. Um, I was going through uh, comments, and th there's they're talking like revolutionaries. If you if you don't know what they're talking about. Uh, they it's want hard to, to tell, revolution. It's hard to tell if they're communists or or some kind Just of fascist. Just neo Nazis, revolution. I think. Um, at least some of them are, or, or some some kind of uh, similar ideology uh, to to Nazism. Uh, that's for sure. Um, they are playing a revolution, but they're yeah. uh, too weak. They maybe if they would uh, do an attempt, they will just make a counter uh, far leftist revolution that sadly have a far better chances of uh, succeeding. This is well, you know, we already saw uh, a rehearsal on the sixth of January, right? Of, of that, a small. Um, uh, they they are the right. disorganized. They are stupid. They are. Uh, uh, the range uh, they, they they sadly will probably kill many Jews in their attacks, terrorist attacks. But they they will make a revolution from the other side if they will start uh, fighting. Yeah, citizens, and then you also have the moral high ground. If they are injecting racism into everything, if they are the th people who want to tear things down. You're not in the – they try to frame you out as a white supremacist or a sympathizer or as a racist or whatever. It's not you. It's actually them. So you have the evidence. You have the argument. You have the moral high ground. Don't be afraid. Get a little bit of informed. Get together with some of your friends, your your other parents at the school. What you Talk to your kids. Engage with them. Engage with them on these ideas. Ask them to talk about it and then show up. Show up and cheer if you don't want to talk. Show up and, and you know, find out who is talking and bake them cookies. Something like that. Get involved in some way. Start getting organized. You can do it. It's all on your side. Did you hear? Make us cookies, people.